everyone. I'm Linda Nickel, and I wanted to welcome you back for our ninth happiness hour. I'm not really sure how we got here, but we are here. Um, when I decided to host these Zoom meetings, our meetups, I thought we'd do these for a couple of weeks, and um, you know, I'd run out of people to ask favors from. But I am excited to tell you, I'm really just thrilled um, that as of about an hour and a half ago, I booked somebody for January. So we have people lined up to speak um, through the first week of January. So uh, some of the topics that are, we're gonna cover are, I've got landscape photographers, people that do long exposure. I've got an astrophotographer that's in queue. We're gonna do macro, um, time-lapse, videography, and I even have a celebrity photographer. So um, to supplement that, I'm gonna bring in, last week Michael Rung was here, and he shared a bunch of his tips and tricks uh, with Lightroom. And so I'm going to have somebody come in and uh, do some Photoshop uh, techniques with you for us. So I'm hoping to cover a little bit of everything. So um, on Tuesdays, um, I'll post the lineup on my Instagram page at Cousin Linda, and you can tag your friends there, let them know, hey, this thing's going on. If you want to join, please, please, you know, tell them to come. Um, and this is the first time you've joined us. You can check out our past sessions on YouTube. Um, just look for Cousin Linda's Happiness Hour. Keep in mind, they're very informal and they're very um, unpolished because I say um, a lot. But um, one of the reasons I love doing these sessions is to connect uh, with new people and introduce you to new people. So if you'll add your Instagram or your website or and, and where you're from in the chat line, everyone can see those and there's a good chance that you guys might be already following each other on Instagram. Um, you do not have to be on Instagram to, to join us. You don't have to be on Facebook or this is for everybody. So if you know a, a budding photographer that um, would, would benefit from some of these sessions, please tell them to join us. Um, if you are also, if you're a, a, a workshop, uh, instructor or a teacher or uh, you've got a skill set that you'd like to to share with other people um, hit me up um, you can reach me at cousinlinda at gmail.com or through my Instagram and let's talk and let's see if we can fit you into the schedule so uh, the lady at the controls is Erin Randall so if if you hear a lot of Erin this or Erin that, that's who she is. And she's gonna keep you all on mute so that we kind of um, don't have any interruptions while Jane is doing her presentation. So next week, um, our guest will be Sherry Hunt, who is watching and hopefully she'll wave a little bit. Um, Sherry is obsessed with the night sky and I found her on Instagram last year and reached out to her and said, you know, what I'd like to do is um, do a little workshop for women. I run an Instagram page called Texas Through Her Lens and I wanted to take some women out to a dark sky and if they hadn't ever learned how to, to shoot the Milky Way, I wanted them to learn it, to see it, to experience that. So she and I took eight women out to Fort Griffin and that is one of the prettiest places to stargaze in Texas. It's a dark sky, it's amazing. We started at sunset and we watched the Milky Way rise and we stayed up through sunrise. And there were eight of us and uh, in addition to, uh, me and Sherry. So 10 of us together. Um, only one person called a timeout for a nap and I'm pretty sure she was the youngest one in the group. It was a fantastic experience and um, if you'll notice I don't have a picture of her up. Erin uh, do you have those slides up? Erin? Uh-oh. I'm sorry. And um, hopefully that's up. Are you not sharing, seeing the slides? I'm sharing them. Um, I'm not seeing them, but let me look real quick. Are you guys, well, they can't tell me. Can y'all nod? Can you see them? Okay, great. Thank you. That was my mess up. So uh, if you'll notice, I don't have a picture of Sherry because that was a hot, sticky, stinky 
experience. And I have a lot of pictures of her, but she would probably strangle me and I wouldn't blame her if I posted any of those. So she'll be here next week and, and you'll get to hear from her firsthand. Um, her presentation is going to be called Milky Way Hunting for Beginners. So um, there, if you guys are already seasoned um, Milky Way chasers, you're still welcome to join us. And hopefully, you know, she can share something that you may not already know. So this week's guest is Jama Pantel. Jama is, was the very first person that um, um, stood up and said, I'll go first. So she did our first presentation on the happiness hour. And um, she is an Austin-based portrait photographer, a dedicated marathon runner. And the only person that I know that I know that has been featured by the New York Times. So you need to go to her website and, and find that article. And um, you can also link through her um, YouTube channel there. So she has been posting um, how-to videos there. So tonight's presentation is called Strike a Pose. And with her help, we will all be posed at the ultimate professional selfie. So in the chat line, if you have any questions for Jama, if you'll put them there and I'll do my best to get them in front of her. So with that, Jama, I'm going to pass it on to you. Okay, thank you. And, and like I said, the rain and thunder and everything is coming down on top of me right now, so it might get a little loud and I hope y'all don't lose me. Um, let me see how if I can share screen with you guys. One of the things too I should have mentioned, if you guys are in, you have an option for gallery view, which you'll see all of us in the little Brady Bunch grids, or if you can choose speaker view, it'll be easier for you to see Jameis' screen. And that's at the top right. Okay, you're good. Are you there, Jameis? Yeah, I'm here, can y'all hear me? I, I oh, can't. Hold on. Here we go. Does that work? Perfect. Okay. Can, you put, can you put that on full screen? Yeah, hold on just a sec. For some reason, it's Let's see, can I put it on full screen? It might be. You might be there. Yeah, I think I'm there. Okay, uh, okay so I will try not to talk as fast as I normally do. I get nervous talking in front of people, but fortunately right now I can only see Linda and Matt and Joy. Hi guys. Hi. Um, <laughs> so Strike a Pose by me, Jama Pantel Photography, um, jamapantel.com, at by Jama Pantel. Personal Instagram account. Um, I'm just starting to grow my business Instagram account. Y'all are more than welcome to follow both, um, but you don't have to, so I'm here. Um, so for today's presentation, um, the main topics that we'll be talking about, lighting and location. Um, last time I did a presentation on lighting, so I won't go in depth on that, but always keep that in mind. It is plays a huge part in getting these good selfies, getting these good pictures, you need good light. Um, when I asked a couple weeks back about questions people have them were how to not feel awkward in front of the camera which I get quite a bit in my business anyway so I will talk about that um, a lot of people that are joining are small businesses your face is your brand you want to be comfortable in front of the camera and connect with connects you with your audience so we're going to talk a little bit about that and then the majority of what we'll be talking about are poses um, for your best selfie. Um, so as Linda mentioned a little bit about me, I'm owner photographer Jama Pantel Photography, family portrait artist here in Austin, Texas, New York. Um, and I have over 20 years experience behind the camera in studio, natural light, everything else. And I love art for your home. That is, as you can see, um, that is what I try. A little story with y'all, my external hard drive yesterday I have lost all digital pictures I've had for the past from 2008 till 2019 I'm working on getting that backed up but if you have it printed generally it's safer than technology technology is always changing the things I have in college I don't have anymore um, unless you have it printed, it won't 
blast. And also I do business headshots and branding. I'm a small business owner myself. I know how important it is to have these images um, for your social media, for selling yourself, putting your best face forward. So that is another part of my business and something that I provide. Success, uh, posing success, you, know, build conf you want to build your confidence. That's a lot of times in your own head. Set a game plan of what you want to achieve by taking these pictures and then pose with authority. So, oops. Location, like I said, I talked about that last time. Um, you always want to have good light. Uh, consider the location you're using and make sure the light is ideal for that location. Um, large windows. Uh, windows, if you don't have that, a very inexpensive ring light. So for next to nothing. Also, you want to try to clear the clutter around you. Um, you want people focused on you in the picture, not so much everything else behind you. Although I don't always take my own advice and have a bunch of stuff behind me. Um, so if you have any any questions or anything like that, I can't answer them later, but I'm going to just, like I said, skip over that pretty fast um, because I talked about it in more detail last time. Um, so how to not be awkward in front of the camera. This could probably be a whole class in and of itself, but um, like posing is what more people want to hear about. So the simple answer, get out of your own head. Um, I know it's easier said than done. We all have, you know, our own hangups in our head about everything else, but I promise you, it's not as bad as you think. Um, if you have, um, if you tell yourself in your head, I'm gonna perform an action and you perform that action, you start thinking about that instead of what you're doing. So for this picture here, I'm gonna walk towards this bridge. I'm gonna put my arm up off you smile, you pose. It's you walk through this in your head and it takes your mind off of what you're actually doing. I am the queen of the fake laugh. Throw your head back and laugh. And a lot of times it, it looks very natural, believe it or not. Um, my favorite tip in the world, hold something. Everybody asks, what do I do with my hands? You hold something. Mine is generally my camera. It's like our shield. We hide behind it. I hide behind my camera. I'm always holding that camera. So hold something. I know for all the other business owners out there, the tools of your trade, your makeup brushes, your pencils, your crayon, there's flowers, anything. There's a billion things out there that you can hold. Um, and pretend, fake that confidence, fake it until you make it. I promise with enough practice, you will get better at it. And then smile or not smile, if that's your thing too. I Everything. It's very rare you will catch a picture of me not smiling. I've posted plenty of my running pictures that were taken of me where I am actually smiling in the picture. I always know where the camera is and I'm always smiling for it. Um, so my go-to tip for this fake smile, um, you do it, you're, you naturally form a smile and I do it all the time in my pictures. <laughs> I do it subconsciously these days, but if you do it, it just naturally brings a smile. And another thing, think happy thoughts. If you go into it, yesterday I had a really, really bad day. This isn't finding out how much that was gonna cost. And I had to get that out of my head and think happy thoughts so I could work on this presentation for you guys and get this finalized and ready for y'all. Um, so with clients, I say for your posing couples, ask them to, you know, when they start thinking about these things, they get out of their head and they, you know, ignore the camera on them and they get more into the zone and what they're doing and it brings out those natural smiles and stuff like that. So just think happy thoughts, you know, have a storage bank in your head of happy thoughts and those will be your go-tos. In connection, your website, your reputation, your face is your brand, your brand is your reputation. Um, and you want it to be meaningful, whether it's your website, your social media, whatever. All of us are on social media because we're here today. We are a brand. Uh, whether or not we're all a brand and whatever we put out there is how people respond to us, how we resonate with other people and stuff like that. So you want to put goodness out there, you'll get goodness back in. Um, comfor comfortable atmosphere. Um, when you're creating pictures in a place, you're results. Um, I 
my clients love photographing in their own homes in their backyard. They are comfortable in those places. Um, they're able to relax more and be themselves and everything else. Um, find your happy place. That's where you want to take these. Muted, Linda. I see it. Okay. There you are. Um, you're cutting out just a little bit. I don't know if that's me or you. So let's just keep going. But yeah, every okay. You're cutting it sounds out. like the storm's passing. My my power was flickering for okay. a little bit, so I apologize for that. Yeah, so that you can't control. <laughs> <laughs> no, it sounds like it's moving away, but I I flickered uh, on me. I, it's coming right over my house now. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, then connect with your audience. I can't stress this enough. Um, when you have strong images, it better helps you to connect with your audience. Um, they'll respond. I think we may have lost you again. Uh oh. Yeah. So I didn't hear a thing the last two minutes. Do you mind repeating that? Yeah. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Okay. Um, so connect with your audience, I think is where y'all lost me. Number three. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I can't stress this enough when you have strong audience and that will help you grow your audience. Um, whether you like it or not, like I said, this is your brand, you're, you're on social media, you're growing your audience, or you're, you know, finding people to follow, you'll follow who you like that way. Um, okay. And I have examples of this, so I'll talk in a little bit more detail when I get to those pictures, but the basics of it, angles, um, low camera angles, shooting up um it doesn't look good make sure your camera is at face level or a little generally speaking a little bit higher is the best most flattering angle um and that's where you want your set your camera your phone whatever you're taking the neck um move your chin up and out a little bit and i know it sometimes feels awkward but i promise you it gives you those flattering lines that you want you don't want the double chin look. Nobody look like this. Um, sit correctly. Are y'all there? Can I'm, you hear me? I can hear you. you you're, you're breaking up just a little bit, but um, let's just try to push through it. Mm, no. Sorry. Sorry. No. <laughs> um, so sit correctly. So if you're sitting down, generally you want to cross your feet at your ankles. Um, it creates long, slim legs instead of like if you cross them like you normally would when you're comfortable and you sit. It shows a lot of thigh and that might not be a flattering look for a lot of people. Um, what to wear, and this is huge. Um, avoid bulky or baggy, and I am guilty of this. I wear baggy t-shirts all day, every day, but for pictures, you don't want to do that. You want to wear something that's slim, fitted, you know, cinched at the waist, that kind of thing. And that fits. If you go a size too small and it cinches the waist, that will also be unflattering. So make sure you, you get your size. You can fix all of the posing and angles when we talk about that a little bit more with that, but get something that's fitted and your size. Um, darker colors are more slimming. Black is very slimming. I tend to wear a lot of black. Um, if you like bright colors, go for it. Just don't wear something that's too distracting that takes away from your face. And nobody looks good in horizontal stripes unless you're five years old or younger. <laughs> um, so avoid this way if you want to look tall and lean, I guess, I don't know. But <laughs> those are some simple tips on what to wear. And also I can go into a lot more detail about that and probably a whole other po post on what to wear, but that's the simple gist of that. Um, and so the different poses, posture, if you're standing, your body to an angle slightly, shift your weight to the back foot, put a hand on the hip in a pocket, something like that. You never want them 
at your side, it adds bulk to you. You want that separation. If you squeeze it up against your side, it's going to fatten you up. If you have separation, it looks a lot slim. Push your shoulders back, down, relaxed, and angled. Like I said, and don't forget that neck out too. So if you're seated in a stool pose, um, sit flat on the stool, butt, butt, bottom. I think I use the word bottom in here, but I'll say butt, flat on the stool. One foot down. Pictures of these I'll show you in a second, it'll make more sense. One foot a little bit higher, the knees shifted towards the camera. Um, let's see, stick to the middle. And so this is more important if you're shooting with a wide angle, if you're in groups and stuff like that. If you're on the outside of the pattern, stick to the middle. It's a more flattering angle. So the armchair seated pose, um, you'll slightly, I'll do it on my office chair. So the chair is here. So, slightly on your hip towards the camera. You can play with your legs, cross them at the ankles, even though you create your core, your body angle, so you can do your body straight on. Do it angled, um, rest your arms, stuff like that, and different things. And I'll talk about hand poses in a little bit, but different things to do with your hands when you're posing and doing all that. Head and shoulders, head tilt. Said back down, relaxed. Head tilt, you can lean it towards the camera away from the camera. Um, generally speaking, the feminine tilt is towards the camera, so it's not recommended for guys. Guys is the masculine tilt towards the back shoulder, but that works for both guys and girls. Um, shoulders relaxed, stuff like that. And then um, have fun. That's the thing most if you, like I said, get out of your head and you just have fun and enjoy it. It'll go a lot smoother. It'll be a lot easier. So let's look at some of those um, common Oh, the standing pose. So in this one, I'm standing clearly. Um, so I'm leaning forward. My weight's shifted. My arms are away from my side. I'm holding something to keep my hands occupied. And I literally did the get up thing and came down and just caught it where I needed to catch it. Um, and it's as simple as that. The standing poses are some of the easier ones. If you're uncomfortable in front of the camera, start with a standing pose um, and kind of get yourself more comfortable with it and stuff like that. Um, you know, they're standing and leaning on, on things, stuff like that. Generally, if you're leaning on something, you're a little more confident or comfortable, relaxed and stuff like that. And that also helps with your posing. That's another little trick. Um, so I chop my head off in this so you can see what I'm doing where I've got my um, hands crossed on the chair in front of me, um, shoulders leaned, head tilted, you know, relaxed, head tilted. Um, my legs are out to the side, crossed at the angles, which you can't see in here, but I promise they are, and it helps frame your core. Like I said, you won't always show the full body, but it helps frame your core when you do this. Um, I'm turned 45 degrees to the camera in that one. My shoulders are down, relaxed. My hands are crossed here. You can cross them, which is more common when you're in the standing pose, not so much the sitting pose, but there's a million different things you can do with hands and posing on that. Um, so then we'll go with the stool, the seated stool pose. Um, you can see I'm sitting flat on my butt. I've got one foot down, one foot slightly higher. So my knees aren't at the same angle. I'm slightly, my knees are shifted a little bit. Um, holding the camera to keep my hands occupied so I don't feel awkward. Um, shoulders down, relaxed, head tilted towards the front shoulder. Laughing at my ridiculous self because I can see myself <laughs> um, because I'm using their, my camera as my remote and I can see myself on there and that's entertaining to me. <laughs> um, so I laugh at myself when I do this, but I'm doing it. And then I hid the camera in my pocket and that's what you don't see in the picture but it's hidden really quick because I set it on a 10 second timer so I can capture all these um, which I'll talk about that a little bit more too but that's how I get all of these um, and so that's your seated uh, stool pose um, and there are so Jamie real quick so all of the shots that you're doing you're shooting all of them on a self timer right Yes, I am. So okay. I'm using self timer. I put it for 10 seconds, two seconds doesn't give me enough time to hide my camera. Most of your cam your, your cell phone, sorry, most of your cell phones have a 10 
10 second self timer too. So if you're using your phone, set it on that self timer. Also flip the screen so you can see what you're doing when you're using your cell phone to take these pictures. Um, like I said, I, Canon and Nikon both have apps. If you're using a camera that has the Wi-Fi capabilities and all of that, there is an app on for both Canon and Nikon. You can use it as the remote and you can see the picture on your camera and that's how you focus on yourself um, and everything else. If you're using your cell phone for it, all of these cell phones have self timers on it. Like I said, flip the screen so you can see what you're doing and see how you're posing and stuff like that. Do the 10, the 10 second self timer. Before you hit it, think about what you're gonna do with your hands, how you're gonna pose, do all that, get everything else. So the last thing you do is pose your hands and, and put them where they need to go. Yeah, I think it's one of these, you know, do we race, you know, it's kind of like, it's one of those things that we all get stuck with. Okay, we know we've got two seconds and we're not setting long enough times for us to get from point A to point B and compose. So, okay. Yeah, absolutely, 10 seconds. Um, like I said, plan it out in your head. You can see what you're doing. Get there. Put my hands in position is the last thing I generally do um, because I'm hiding my camera behind me or my, yeah, my, my cell phone behind me or wherever else um, and doing whatever. So give yourself time. I know the longer you go, the more you think about it and you're staring at the camera. Okay. It gives you the time to do everything and you can take pictures and everything. Um, and so hand poses, and these are just a couple of them. Um, and you can see, I clearly laugh at myself when I'm doing this stuff. And I did all of these myself. This is a selfie thing. I promise you, it's harder to do it yourself. My number one tip is always hire a professional. But if you can't, you can do these yourself um, and laugh at yourself and have fun like I did. So there's a million variations of hand poses. So the two hand lean, I'm leaning into it. Do not press your hand up against your face. That's not flattering. Soft and gentle and sweet like this, not like this. <laughs> um, so the thinking or thoughtful pose, there's a lot of variations of this. Um, you know, you can do a number of things. Um, for women, it's generally considered more flattering if you show the side of your hand, a couple of fingers, you don't want them stiff, bent at 90 degree angles, bent at the knuckles. You want them loose, fluid, dangling. Okay. Pose like that. So the masculine generally is the fist facing forward. Um, and women can do it too, but generally speaking, it's considered a masculine pose. And it's a very popular man pose, if you will. Um, and then like holding your neck. You can do it either way. You do the running your hands through your hair type thing. Um, there's, you know, framing your face. There's so many different things you can do with your hands and it might feel really awkward doing it, but I promise it photographs well. And anytime I tell people this, I immediately then show them the back of the camera and they're like, oh wow, that's really, really pretty. I'm like, trust me, <laughs> I'll just do what I tell you to do with your hands and the result will be really, really pretty. It's awkward as you feel doing you're standing leaning on something everything else mm -hmm. so do you have a question I, you know I do I'm gonna stop you because I, I don't want to get too far um I just want some clarification for Deborah she says if she's using a non phone camera to take the photo how is she setting herself up what is she looking at are you tethered to a laptop um so like a point and shoot type camera or what? No, I think she's just wanting to know what you're, what you're using. So, so if you're using a non-phone camera, I'm guessing. If I'm not using my cell phone where I can see it. So I have, get, get creative. I have, before I had the Wi-Fi technology and everything else, um, you can set up your phone and see what you're, reverse the camera on it and you can see what you're doing. Um, I have, focused on so if you measure your height from your eyes down to your butt if you're doing a sitting pose if you put something on whatever you're sitting on measure it up and put it right there and focus on that and then you move that and you timer move it and you go sit there that's how you focus it's really hard to do but i've done that plenty of times before i got the technology to to see myself and do it myself 
So I put something where I'm going to be sitting and focus on, usually it's my kawaii rooster or something like that. And I put it on books, put it on my camera bag, put it on a suitcase, whatever you need to do to get it to that height. Like I said, you can be creative in all of this. I've got the technology nowadays to do all this that I don't have to get as creative anymore, but there are so many ways you can do this and I've done it all. And that's why I say hire a professional because it's hard doing it that way. <laughs> Like you've used a phone for some of the shots here and then for a non-phone camera for others I guess her question is does she have a preferred camera for a selfie I use my Canon 5D Mark IV for my selfies I if you follow me on Instagram you'll see my feet more than my face in just about anything I am not a traditional selfie person I never have been I I, I don't do it that way if you see a picture of me running which is rare it's set up on my cell phone, put, post it or put up on something, leaning on something. I'm not doing it, you know, this way. But my big camera takes all my selfies. Yeah. And so you're using your, an app for your camera from your phone. Uh, to Canon Camera Connect is what it's called. And I forget what the Nikon version is called. But if you go to the app store, yeah. it will control any Canon camera or Nikon camera that has the Wi-Fi capabilities. It's not specific to my camera. Yeah, there's, I think it's called Nikon WMU. It's just, it's just an app that comes in and she may not be using either one of those, but uh, most cameras these days with the technology, they're, they've got their own apps. So yeah. I, would, I would look for that. And that allows you to trigger your, your. It is, it does. And I also have, uh, Canon has a, I don't know where my camera bag is, has a little remote shutter. Mm -hmm. Clicker. Yep. Okay. Should have one of those. Sony's got an Nikon Olympus. Everybody's got them. Yep. Yep. She's got an Olympus mirrorless, so she's going to look for the app. So. Yeah, look for the app. If you've got the Wi Fi, there's got to be an app for it where you can trigger trigger it for and, sure. And, and if you get in a bind and you do find it and you still don't really understand how to use it, shoot an email or reach out to Jama on her Instagram. Just private message her. She can walk you through that. I can walk you through it. I've played with most camera brands um, many times throughout my career, so I can figure out and read most of them. I love this. Bill Give me a second, but I know where. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm laughing because Gil just wrote, he says, awesome. I just downloaded the app and took my first photo using my phone. He's very excited. Yay. See, I told you it works. And the camera lingo, I how to use that, use it to take it. Um, if you don't understand that, I can read through all that and explain it to you in you know a lot easier terms and layman's terms, if you will. So if you need help, reach out to me. I will help anybody with anything. Ask Gil. I help him all the time. <laughs> um, and so we're, we are getting towards the end of it. Like I said, there's a million things you can do with your hands, with your posing and everything else. I tried to keep it short, sweet, and simple and things that are easier and more natural for you to remember. Um, and then I'll go into more detail when I get to the end of this about your brand holding things in your pictures and that kind of stuff. So general posing tips, let your personality shine. Um, don't criticize yourself um, and get in your head. That's when you start thinking about it and everything else. Just let your personality show. That's what your audience wants to connect to. I will be the first to say I'm the biggest door. <laughs> like I am not afraid to laugh at myself and pose ridic post ridiculous pictures of myself. I'm sure y'all have seen them. Um, so comfort equals confidence. The more comfortable you are, the more grounded your body language becomes, the more kind of the camera. Um, and it just, it speaks to people so much more than if you, you know, like I said, thinking too much. So just be comfortable with what you're doing. Um, like I said, if you aren't comfortable doing all this, do it at home. Don't do it in a coffee shop or, you know, anywhere else. Do it at home when nobody's around. Um, so the only person laughing at you is yourself, which there's nothing wrong with that. You can take a million of them and all you need is, you know, that one good one. Um, and I'll go back up and show you all some examples of what I mean. You can take a million to get the one. Um, and then basically, your posing tools, your hands, your body, and your expression. Um, that's what you use to pose. That's, you know, generally everything you can think of. And like I said, let me show you. 
I'm talking about. I take pictures for my brand all the time. I get clients' pictures in. I want to take them before I wrap them up and deliver them to my clients. It took me a million shots, a million captures to get this one picture. You know, I had one light set up. Balance it out. Um, I was trying to, because I'm up against the wall, if I focus on the picture, I'm out of focus. So I had to adjust my F stop so it wasn't so shallow so I could get both in focus. I probably did about 50 takes to get this one shot. Um, it's like I said, this is really difficult to do. If you have someone to press a shutter for you, it's so much easier. But when you're doing it by yourself, it's possible. It takes time, it's time consuming, but it gets the job done. Um, <laughs> so all of you that, you know, have businesses where you're trying to brand stuff, um, your face doesn't have to be in all of the pictures by any means to speak for your brand. I was hired to do some product work for a company over quarantine. I was the model and the photographer on it. I chopped my face out of all of it because they didn't want my, you know, need my face in every single picture. But so on it. Um, pose myself in front of it. Like I said, I think on this one I used my little trigger because it was easier to hide um, and pose myself in front of it and took the picture. And it only took me two shots or so to get this. The more practice you have at it, the easier full setup like this. They all don't have to be as complex as the other one of me trying to hang that picture on the wall when you get reflections off of everything. Um, that's a little more complicated, <laughs> so keep it simple. Um, like I said, use that natural window light if you're a brand and you're taking pictures of your tools of the trade, stuff like that, some other easy ones. Your hands holding your coffee cup. I mean, the majority of us drink coffee tea all day that, you know, I guarantee your audience will relate to that. Those are easy images of yourself, selfies to get, stuff like that. Um, working on your computer, I don't have them on here, but I have pictures of me working on the computer with one hand taking, you know, I have one hand on the computer and I've got the camera up taking it with, with the other hand and, and stuff like that. There's so many different ways you can do it. I did this whole entire series of images for this company with myself and, and as the photographer. Um, you have to be creative, use what you've got, think outside the box and you'll make it happen. Um, I think that's, about all I've got. Um, if you'll have any questions. So if you guys have any questions, run into the chat really quick and let's see if we can't get her to take advantage of, of the speaker. That's, that's the what I like to do is like, she's here, she's trapped. Um, we have a few more minutes. So if there's anything that you guys, um, and, and I have to apologize, we, we, I think we did have some sound issues and that's something we couldn't control with the weather and we're, we're kind of, um, you know, stuck with, with Zoom. So uh, can you talk about your ring light again? Okay, so I've got, um, this handy dandy little ring light that lights me up. Um, you can go off of Amazon and order a ring light for next to nothing. I have set up this ring light to do my faux studio portraits. I have studio background, all that. Sometimes it's easier to get out the light than it is to set up studio lights or set up a speed light. This specific one does color adjustment so I can adjust warmth or cool. If I'm also using natural light from a window and say it's you know a really warm day, um, I can counterbalance that with this, but I paid, I didn't pay much for it. You can find them on Amazon for next to nothing. They're super easy. They come with a tripod and a little um, adapter to put your cell phone in there or your camera in there. Um, and I linked to that last time. It is up on my website still, and I can, you know, reach out to me if you have questions. I can totally tell you which one I got, if that helped you. And it's very easy to use. Um, natural light and outdoors it's a lot easier to do a lot of this stuff because you don't the sun's your light source um a lot of my studio lights are um speed lights i have studio lights but speed lights just for me are so much easier and that's what i use for a lot of these setups and stuff so gil has a question he wants to know can you autofocus with the phone app yes or autofocus you can so you touch on the phone screen where you you want to focus, so obviously you always want to focus on the eyes. Touch on the screen, like where your eyes are or your face is on, this, on your screen showing. Touch on that and it'll focus your camera. Okay. 
Okay. And All right. Like I said, if you don't have the camera in a focus. Oops, sorry, can you repeat? Exactly where you're gonna be in focus. Repeat so, that. Yeah, repeat that, would you? Touch it on your phone, touch your face on your phone. Basically, your phone will be what is on your camera, whatever it'll be showing on your phone. So touch your eyes, touch your face on the phone, and it'll focus on that spot. If you're trying to get your face in focus, maybe you want your face blurred, I don't know. <laughs> whatever, whatever you want focus, touch that. So I think Amazon's going to get this really weird uh, rush on ring lights, because I think there's a couple of people that are going to be looking for their Amazon Prime to make some deliveries. All right. And so it's it's very simple. I set it up directly in front of you know, you know one direction line or whatever, but it hides your flaws like crazy if you shoot if you have your light head on. If you have an angle to the side or something like that, it will show your wrinkles or whatever else. So if you're trying to hide all that, put it head on. It fills in all those uh, shadows and stuff like that on your face and it helps it um, I think on one of these, on this picture, I have my light set up to the side and you can see one side of my eyes have no wrinkles and the other side you can see it and that's the light and shadow and stuff like that. And so playing with lights and shadows um, is another thing to make. Mm -hmm. But, and that's a fairly large ring light though, isn't it? For this one is not the ring light. No, I use speed light and a studio setup for this one. This is not a ring light one. Um, my drive went, my hard drive went down. The ring light pictures I had were on that. Not on. Everything uh, you saw here just about was shot in the last two days that I did really, really quick for you guys for purposes. I had other pictures I was gonna use of different things I've done to show more of it, but I had to do everything in the last two days. Sorry guys. This was shot with studio lighting. Okay. Well, thanks for rushing through all that and getting all this stuff prepared for us. It, you know, it's, it's, doing these presentations takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of prep work. And, you know, then you've got the mental, put your head in the right place to do a presentation. So, you know, I, I feel for you, Jama. I'm, this is why I get to like, just say, Hey, this is Jama and she's going to talk about because I cannot do what you're doing. So um, I go on and on about it. I try to keep it short. I'm a, photo nerd. If y'all know me, you'll know that. And I can talk about this stuff for ages. I try to. So David has a question. Can you tell, uh, tell us what that ring light brand is just so, since you're captured? It's right there. It doesn't say it on that. And the okay. packaging is in my office. Um, I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. It doesn't say it on here. The packaging for it sits in my office. I'm in my bedroom. Um, so I don't know. It's so linked on my website. I'd have to look. Okay, yeah. So that's a, that's a good point. So if you go to her website, she's done an article on lighting. It's linked there, so you can just jump right into to Amazon. So um, Chris wants to know. Um, so you can focus any picture with this phone app. Yep, you can. Okay, great, perfect. Um, any other questions, y'all? Anybody? Jama loves questions. Do not be shy. They can, they can be on anything photography really. They don't have to be on posing. Like I said, when I had a lot more questions when I talked about lighting for you guys. So if they are lighting questions, yeah. let me have them. Or I'm just gonna say, or portraits. Or oh, portraits, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I've been doing this for a long time. All of it's second nature. They, so, all right, well, I, hard. is there anything else here? I think that is the end of our presentation. Uh, no, there was, Susan was asking uh, other tips for those who wear glasses. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so remember when I talked about the neck and the chin and all of that? So all of that applies. Instead of having, I wear glasses, instead of having glasses pushed up directly, move them down just a hair on your nose. I And I meant to bring my glasses in here to show you guys, and I, I'm sorry I did Move your head in front of the ring light, you'll see it where you see the full circle of the ring light and glare, not good. If you move it just a hair, I mean, it's just a fraction, it'll disappear and you'll be lit properly. So just move it instead of directly on, slight little angle, and that'll fix the problem. 
Um, Gil has another question. Do you download your photos from your laptop or do you use the Wi-Fi app? So these pictures that I took here, like this one I took yesterday, the one that's sitting on the screen still, I took yesterday, I just transferred it to my phone um, from my camera and, and turned it black and white because, and, and it might be hard to tell right now, I ran 60 miles in the Texas sunshine on Saturday and my face, and I forgot sunscreen and I never forget sunscreen, my face was lobster red with my raccoon eyes for my sunglasses and don't ever get sunburned for pictures. It's not flattering. I don't recommend it for anybody. A lot of photographers have a clause in their wedding contracts about that, that they cannot promise you will look good if you get sunburned on you before your wedding. So I turned it black and white <laughs> and it hides my sunburn. Well, but that's the sunburn I've ever seen. It, it's better today on a Wednesday than it was the other day. It was pretty bad. <laughs> Sunburn doesn't photograph well, guys. There's a lot of tinkering and Photoshop you have to do to get rid of sunburn skin. So don't do it. I don't recommend it. <laughs> well, maybe we'll have to have you come back and do a portrait on how to do touch-ups and, and fix skin tones. I would love to know how to do that. Yeah. Um, so are there any more questions? Last call for questions. So with that, I'm going to close out this session. Um, I'm going to pop this onto YouTube. Hopefully we will, uh, the, we did have some sound gaps in here, so hopefully they didn't show up in, um, on the video, but we can't, we can't, it, this is, it's very unpolished and informal and we're just having a good time. So hopefully you guys can. And if you have questions, reach out to me. If y'all, if something cut out and you want to have questions, yeah, you know how to find me. I'm all over the place and I will answer. Everybody who knows me knows I will help with anything and answer anything. Um, and I will also have this uh, presentation. I am not a video learner. I like reading things. So I will have it up on the website in a form that you can read it for those of you like me who like to read and comprehend better that way. Okay. Jamie, would you be able to provide that to me so I can link it to the YouTube? That'd yep. be I sure can. Great. And so you can link this PDF to it too, if you can link PDFs, I don't know. Um, but you can put this up too if you want. That's great. So you guys, next week, Sherry Hunt's going to be with us and she's going to do uh, Milky Way hunting, I guess, for beginners. And um, I've been shooting the Milky Way for a little while, but I, I, will, be, I will be there. And there's so much stuff that um, I've already forgotten, Sherry, so please forgive me. Um, so with that, look for um, my post on Tuesday at Cousin Linda, and you'll see the lineup, and hopefully by then I will have one or two more um, uh, people with their classes up. So there is a question, Sherry, from Jamie, and she wants to know if you're going to discuss photo pills. So uh, just kind of let that meld and maybe she'll be able to, you know, kind of thread that into her presentation. But I suspect that, that um, it will come up, Jamie. So, okay, with that, guys, you guys watch the weather. Be careful out there because I'd love to see you guys back next week. Um, go ahead and shut us down, Erin. And then for the usuals, 